Well, the same is true here for creation, that God created it. So he gets to decide what he wants to do with it. And since we are his created beings, he gets to decide what he wants to do with us as well. And thankfully, he is a good, loving, benevolent creator, and he wants to do good things in our lives. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But the question here is, is not, is this true that God has creator rights? It's what do we do with this truth? Do we rebel against it and ultimately perish? Or do we embrace it and ultimately flourish? And I would offer to you this morning that any place in your life that you're pushing back on God's sovereign rule over your life, there's static, there's trouble, and there's sin. So friends, embrace this truth that our God is the creator of everything and he gets to determine how life goes. Now, the second principle I want to point out here is that this creator God is also the only God. You see this over in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 18. It says, For thus says the Lord who created the heavens, He is God, who formed the earth and made it. He established it. He did not create it empty. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is no other. So here we see evidence of His singularness and also His work in creation. And I think most of us are probably tracking with that truth today. We understand it. But the way that this fleshes out in our world is usually not so clear, is it? Because there are temples just like this one around the earth right now where people are coming in and bringing grain and offerings, sometimes in some parts of the world even sacrificing children to gods that don't even exist. Gods that are ultimately demons and no god at all. There's one god. He is the creator God that has made himself known to us in Christ. And even though most of us are tracking with that truth, we are still prone to worship other gods as well. Now most of our gods don't look like these, but they look like things like status, and identity, and comfort, and control. And even though our idolatry is much more subtle, it is equally dangerous. Even now, as we're talking about this, what are the idols that you are prone to worship? What are the patterns that you are prone to fall into that even now the Holy Spirit is illuminating to you that you need to walk away from? Our idols are subtle, but they're dangerous. And against them, we should bring the functional, practical power of the gospel. For example, if your idol is status or identity, the gospel reminds you you don't have to kill yourself to try to be somebody. It's okay for you to be a nobody because you know a great somebody. If you're here and your idol is approval, you don't have to struggle and strive for the approval of someone else because in Christ, you have the approval of God. If you're here and your idol is control because you want to be the creator and sustainer of your own little universe, number one, that job's already taken and he's doing fine. But number two, you don't have to be in control because God is ultimately in control. So you need to rest and relax. And stop worshiping yourself and your calendar and worship the true God. He is the creator of all things. He is the only God. 